Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is Brett from uh, Crypto Mastery uh, with our weekly class here. It's Tuesday, November 21st. Tomorrow is my birthday, everyone. Uh, we're going to uh, dive into some news and then uh, see what's happening in the markets and talk about how to use the uh, Crypto Mastery indicators that uh, we use here. And uh, of course, you can find out more about that at CryptoMastery.org. So if you're watching on the YouTube and you like the content, please hit the like button, the subscribe. We're going to be getting into some more cool stuff here soon. Got a new format here. We've got the camera right over top of the screen. Cool stuff. All right. Uh, let's talk about some news here. Uh, digital assets. Example, the um, uh, Kraken's been accused of operating unregistered platform by the SEC. You know, it was only a matter of time before they went after Kraken. Uh, Kraken's well run though. I'm surprised they uh, they would do that, but uh, I think really they're going after Kraken because they still offer margin trading without KYC, and the U.S. government doesn't like that apparently. So they're accused of operating unregistered platform by the SEC, CBDC exploration around the globe, and of course in other news we're going to talk about uh, Binance CEO CZ asked to step down. So the you know, SEC is really going after these uh, offshore exchanges. Doesn't like them. And I'll see some other news here. Um, we'll jump to that. A uh, Binance to settle charges. We're going to jump over to that. Uh, the Fed minutes release may be a non-event for Bitcoin. Uh, with that old news. Mm, so show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. Uh, Bitrix shutting down. We knew that. I liked Bitrix. How many of you guys are using Bitrix? That was a cool platform. And uh, another example of the SEC's wrath, shutting that down and uh, causing them to file for bankruptcy. You know, it's a shame. You know, it should be allowed. People should be allowed to do what they want to do. Let's see. Binance and talks to pay more than $4 billion, Holy smokes, you guys. Uh, to end the U.S. criminal case. $4 billion. That's a lot. That's a lot. I wonder what happens here. You know, or else. What do you think they why do you think they're doing that? I don't know. They I think because they really want Coinbase to be the leader uh, because they have control of, um, you know, Coinbase under U.S. regulations. And um, there's more to this story, you guys, I'm sure. And so uh, it's also Sam Magnet Freed trial may be over, but the Bahamas is having its own trial. Poor Sam. But you know what? He deserves it. Uh, so anyway. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. He lost uh, the equivalent of Bernie Madoff in terms of uh, market cap and other people's money. You know, probably will get off with a slap on the rest. What do you guys think? <clears throat> All right. All right. Diving in here. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Binance here. Now that we've talked about the um, the uh, last story there. So Binance uh, about Kraken. So Binance here will be asked to pay $4.4 uh, $4 billion to settle the U.S. Department of Justice accusations of multiple criminal violations. Criminal violations, meaning um, kind of like the mafia. They didn't pay the mafia. So or play again, play along with the rules. You know, I mean, granted, Binance has been doing some things on the side that they probably shouldn't have, including flipping the good old fashioned USA middle finger, a.k.a. the bird at the SEC with its regulations in the beginning. And um, so, you know, now now CZ is probably wishing he played along better, better, nicely, a little nicer. So Binance has been under a lengthy investigation by authorities for money laundering. Uh, may be true. You know, look, these. <clears throat> the, these activities may be defined differently in other countries, aka China, and there have been rumors to be ties with, from CZ to the CCP. And so this might be the U.S. kind of sending the old proverbial bird uh, back over uh, to uh, uh, to uh, Shanghai or whatever, wherever the capital of China is. I don't know, you guys, where is it? Uh, over to um, Chairman Mao there, sending them uh, not via fax, but just sort of the uh, AKA the middle finger to shutting down Binance or going after them. But, um, you know, this could certainly be tied into the nation states and little battle that we have uh, and the uh, the war. Look, whether this is World War Three or not, it doesn't it may not involve bombs, but it's certainly happening with espionage and technology and spying and and uh, weather balloons flying over the United States. Uh, we won't get into that. It's really not our business. Um, I mean, it is, but we probably will never know the truth. So a lot of layers to that onion. So the DOJ failed to comment, declined to comment to Coindesk on uh Let's see. Wait a minute. Where's my uh, fancy uh, highlighter tool, you guys? It's disappeared. So we'll have to re-download that. Hmm. That's odd. Maybe I can find that thing because I know you guys like the uh, little pen deal there. Here it is. So somehow it got turned off. Hmm. Imagine that. Let's go back to the article. 
<clears throat> I want to keep this game moving along. I know you guys are busy. We try to keep this class to an hour. Uh, let's see, Binance. Uh, and uh, come on now, get on there. Binance CZ has faced investigations and accusations on multiple fronts. Well, now looky there. That thing is here. And it won't work. <laughs> so it's been one of those days here, you guys. Um well, that means tomorrow will be a good day for my birthday. So I'm looking forward to that. So agrees to be fined on more than $4 billion. If the company agrees, $4 billion, that's a lot of money, y'all. And that's uh, going to be passed down toward the the customers and trading fees. And the trading fees are minimal. So keep that in mind. And I would read between the lines that, um, you know, that's going to increase pressure on the market maker algorithms, the basically the AI that trades against you. So I don't know. For me, that would be a signal to not use Binance anyway, because... You know, these offshore companies and exchanges, certainly predatory. I've shown that, I've proven that and with Bybit uh, in uh, trading last year, very manip manipulated markets. So <clears throat> anyway, um, what's this about the a uh, UAE? So CZ is a resident of the UAE now. Okay, didn't know that. We would have to be extradited from a country with U.S. extradition treaty. Maybe that's why he lives there. Or set foot in the U.S. territory. Well, darn it, that means CZ will not be coming to Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville. Uh, that's too bad. Um, I know you guys are all heartbroken. All right. Well, let's keep going. We'll keep an eye on that story. And let's see. Uh, Steve's here, by the way. You guys say hi to Steve. He's uh, joining the team. Got his picture down there. Uh, you might be hearing from Steve here in the future. Uh, hey, Steve. Good Glad you could join us. Uh, someone's mic is on. Okay. Maybe yeah, it was Steve. Uh, if you want to come on, say hi. You're welcome to. <clears throat> but we're just going through the news. And uh, let's see. Um, uh, so SEC intervened in FTX's mission to liquidate assets. And so why would they intervene? I don't know. That's, this is sort of non-news. I don't want to get into this here. I want to see things that might be moving the markets or have the potential to move the markets. And uh, let's see. I see Solana tumbling as SEC labels it. Uh, okay. Well, you know, here's an exact example, you guys, of you've shown me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Solana was right up to a resistance level as these things many times do, just like FTX was right at a resistance a trend line coming down. And I was even saying this looks like it's ready to come down. Couldn't have predicted FTX, but it's amazing how they wait for that news catalyst. So uh, let's just take a quick look over here at uh, what Saul is doing, what that looks like. And how did the ATR get turned on? Oh, but well, I'll leave it on. Let me toggle this off for a second, but there's that average true range going bearish. Yeah, so we shot up here to that 60 level, which is where I thought we'd have some trouble. And, um, you know, kind of touched that upper Bollinger Band twice. And if we zoom all the way out here, if we go to a weekly, oh, that's a four hour for some reason. My charts got all buggered here and they're all over the place. All right, let me fix these real quick. So we've got a daily chart. Is there a resistance zone in here? I think it was right around 60. And we don't we don't need to get into that, but it had a big run here. Saul you know, more than doubled here, went down from twenty to sixty, tripled there in about uh, two months' time, a month, a little over a month's time. It's reminiscent of back in uh, August of twenty twenty one when we recommended it right here at thirty five dollars. It went vertical. So, and actually, on that note, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but you see the pattern here. It looks awfully uh, close. Let me just open that up a bit. And um, once you see it, you can't unsee it, you guys. So when these things start to break out, if we take a bars pattern here. And the reason I mention this is on Sol, I am a, a fan of Solana. We'll get back to that news here. But uh, once it had that pullback, it was the only pullback that it had. And then it shot, it shot much higher. So whether this is here, it's a little bit off. Sometimes you need to adjust these things, but uh, they can be pretty, pretty close. Um, similar. So Saul to 160, I think is definitely doable. And point is on this pullback to the 21 day EMA, we want to watch for our other signals to get in. Now, that being said, we did see that the average true range, that was the four hour, Never mind. I was going to say the ATR had gone bearish. We're still bullish in the average true range. So and um, we'll, we'll come back to this for sure. I just wanted to see, was that being affected by the uh, current uh, today's news <clears throat> and let's see we talked about ftx um i don't want to get into that let's get back to sc solana here 
tumbles, doesn't really tumble, as the SEC labels it as a security and Kraken lawsuit. Now, that is potentially damaging for sure. And I wonder why they did that. Another round of these uh, coming after these coming after these coins for um, being securities. Hmm. <clears throat> Kraken's SEC lawsuit, Rock Solana and the crypto market was all dropping 5%. Substantial trading volume amidst a dip hints at potential recovery opportunities and blah, blah, blah. We already, we've been saying that for days. Solana's going to pull back. Uh, Bitcoin, the markets are due to pull back here, you guys. It's gone too far. These will be, and mark my words, this will be an excellent buying opportunity very soon. It's coming. Uh, so these accusation, ac accusations, which point to Kraken's alleged operation as an unregistered securities exchange broker and clearing agency. That's against Kraken. Clearing agency notably affected Solana, but why? And, um, oh, because it's listed new coins as securities. You guys may have already read this, uh, but um, Cardano, Polygon. Polygon's been in the crosshairs already. So was Solana, though. This is nothing new. Algorand, Sandbox. Right, so that's nothing new. Uh, although uh, this is as of November 20th. Okay, well, we want to keep an eye on this for sure. But um, I don't know, guys. I don't know how that pans out. We want to put it on our radar. We'll follow what, uh, you know, follow along with that. And um, we'll keep you posted and we'll watch the charts. Uh, here's that funny article. Steroid smuggler, a smuggler must forfeit 9.4 million in crypto or face 10 years in prison. Prison. I bet you they're Russian, aren't they? That's a lot of steroids, you guys. 9.4 million fine. Wonder why. See, Mohammed Afsal from Slough. I guess not Russian. Where's anyone here of Slough? No idea. Uh, two years in prison in November. Found guilty. Planned to manufacture steroids to be sold in the black market. <clears throat> This isn't really that important, you guys. I just, uh, so Indian based pharmaceutical company shipped to the UK and uh, Juice Pal sent in to eight years. Okay. I, I just thought that was funny. A break from the norm. All right. It can't be uh, all th this boring, serious news gets old after a while, doesn't it? Justice Department, the DOJ unveils the Binance settlement today and uh, for alleged money laundering. We've talked about this. Merrick Garland hold a 3 p.m. Eastern Time press conference. Okay, so this, uh, we don't know really how this thing plays out because it's happening today. All right, so back to Saul. But I see it as support of the 21-day EMA. And the I think that uh, we'd want to we'd watch that. If you're in Solana, here's my read on that. I would have a, an emergency stop here below the 21-day. <clears throat> Pardon me. But um, these things can come down and, have, and bounce off of things. So... You know, that's a tricky one because certainly the 50 day EMA, I would be buying in dollar cost averaging about $42. And you might want to have an emergency stop below that, below $40. But more than likely, if this thing comes down and have people panic sell, it'll get bought up here at $41 right here. That's that was what I would expect. Uh, also, because prior resistance becomes support right in there. Um, I don't think that happens. Salon is too strong, you guys. And, um, and, and I'll, I'll remind you, XRP won their lawsuit. So that's that's very important. I don't know why XRP hasn't gone higher. I'm not a big XRP fan, but <clears throat> the um, nothing against them. They just, it hasn't really lived up to the hype. So we'll come back to Solana and see what we can unpack here. I'll, I'll update you guys that are an M3 active trader, by the way, uh, after that happens. So 3 p.m. to announce separate but related Cryptocurrency enforcement actions. Okay, settlement involved. Uh, mm -hmm. Announcement involved settlement with Binance DOG uh, seeking four billion. We talked about that. That's a lot of money, but we'll see what happens. Um, and that's against Kraken. Um, sorry, Binance. Keep getting that wrong. Polygon. So what's going on with Polygon? Danger of losing sixteen percent if this pattern holds. <clears throat> this is more non-news. We have all these. Crypto experts appearing on these channels. I can't even pronounce this guy's name. Never heard of him. Uh, not not to be, you know, against uh, wherever he's from. But uh, it's just, you, you know, they let everybody put up these articles that submit them. And generally, these patterns are very basic. So what is this pattern that they're talking about? It's a head and shoulders. Well, gee, that's, um, um, you know, not that uh, complex. I do like the head and shoulders, though. Uh, I called the market top with that. But yeah, we see a little head and shoulders here. All right, I'll give him that. You know, I like the simple patterns here. There's a shoulder, there's the head, there's a shoulder. So what happens if uh, if we can 
If it breaks below the shoulder, the measured move from the top of the head to the neckline is, and if we clone that, that's going to put us, I hate how it puts it right over above, potentially uh, down here to around 60 cents. But you guys, I don't see that happening. I think uh, this market is strong. We're in a bull market unless we see some real deterioration, uh, deterioration around uh, some of this other news. But uh, with strong support down in this area. So uh, that head and shoulders, I don't think, plays out too far. We are oversold on the, let's take a look at our indicators, see what we see. So we, we correctly got the uh, bearish ERI right up top here. And Cohen confirmed with the uh, TSI going from green to red down below the 80. So that would have been a sell signal. Uh, the signal line did also go red. So those were the handwriting was on the wall there. The radar is mostly red. So as far as Polygon, I would be looking for buying opportunities when we start to turn higher here on the TSI or the ERI. So if we get the ERI TSI, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you how to get our success checklist here where you can uh, basically go follow along. I'm not sure what that was all about. And so... Uh, all you have to do is if you go to our main website at moonstream.io, you can find this checklist and some other free resources down below some of our other paid services here. But more importantly, the if you'd like to sign up for these classes live every week, just go down to the free crypto training. You can sign up and join us. We've got about 10 people here live. Some are in our M3 Active Trader classes. But here, if you go to the checklist and uh, you enter in your name, I'll show you how to get this. And this is sort of the cheat sheet for <clears throat> how our indicators work. And that's the basis for all of our success here at Moonstream Crypto. All right, so we'll download that. <clears throat> and we'll download that checklist. And uh, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So you do want to download it so that it's interactive. So once you have it open, hit download. And magically, where did it go? Here it is. Uh, and open it up. So what we've done is gamify this. So basically, when this gives a trade score for your trades, and if you get two or three or higher, the trade is valid. It's worth taking the trade. Okay. So for example, and these are based on our indicators you can find at cryptomastery.org. So on the bearish side, when we see these red arrows, it's our early reversal indicator. And when it coincides with the trend strength indicator going red and this going red, those are sell signals. So conversely, if we get start getting the green signals, green arrow, green arrow, and the green circle, that's a buy signal. So we'll look at another example of that on Bitcoin uh, just for now. Sorry, guys. And um, for now, it's definitely not in bullish territory. But once it turns, then that's time to, time to get in. And we also have something called the average true range, which is still green. We saw it go green back down here. So we have several indicators that when they align, uh, they, uh, they can really run. And so let's take a look at some, um, you know what, actually, I want to, we're updating the trade success checklist right now. And uh, I want to get a screenshot of the ATR because I don't think that's in there yet. The average uh, true range here when that goes green, little bull image shows, hey, that's going higher. Okay, so I've got that and we can move on. Any questions on any of this, you guys? Because with these uh, indicators, it's not that hard. It really gives us the inside look at these markets. So let's finish the news. We'll come back to the charts. I just wanted to kind of compare and contrast that. And uh, let's see, where are we on the news here? All the way back. We've talked about Binance. That news coming out later today about um, uh, what they're going to say against uh, Binance there, the $4 billion. And then Polygon, Matic, Head and Shoulders. Okay, sure. Uh, what you want to look for with those is... When it starts to turn higher, that's when we make the most money is buying low, selling high. And too many people chase these when they're breaking out. And that's the wrong way to do it most times. Most times, except for Solana. Solana is its own animal. We found that out in 2021. Senator Loomis faults the SEC's Forbes action on Kraken. So a little bit of infighting, political infighting. And uh, so, you know, wouldn't be surprised if she's running for office here in the future. And But a lot of people are criticizing the SEC, including former SEC execs saying, I don't know why they haven't approved this Bitcoin ETF yet. It makes no sense. <clears throat> so, uh, fault of the regulatory approach, uh, promised to vouch for clear regulation rules in the crypto industry. 
So, uh, you know what? Um, it's it's typical government finger pointing and we don't need to pay attention to it right now. Aragon. We just talk about Aragon because this is one of our picks or was inside of our retire rich class. And um, so the chart looked to go on Aragon, but uh, they have decided to shut down. And so this is a breaking story here. Always it's evolving. We've been aware of this. They're going to be um, shutting down, but ETH is going to replenish people's holdings in Aragon with ETH following controversial dissolution. Surprising, though, the chart still looks good. We've been watching Aragon. And let me jump over to our inner circle watch list. Uh, the symbol is ANT. And, uh, you know, look, this thing's still holding here. Let's see, where's the last date? It's still trading, which makes no sense to me. I've never seen that happen. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't recommend buying this. The chart looks good otherwise, but except they're shutting down. You know, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the uh, the play there? Um, it's an Abraham Lincoln reference. Uh, bad joke. Sorry about that, you guys. But uh, anyway, the point is, why are they not tanking here? I don't know. Maybe there's, see, the real thing is, I'll, the reason I'm watching this is maybe there's some other way this thing continues on and they get bought up or continue on in the future because I think I'm missing something here. Aragon Dow uh, votes to fund legal action against its founders after they unilaterally dissolved. Okay, well, maybe this, maybe this isn't dead then. The governing body has shut down the ANT token without community consultation. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't recommend, this is a lottery ticket. If you're going to buy any ANT, I wouldn't do buy a lot of it. Um, but it's kind of like when uh, uh, FTX went down, Solana tanked, SRM also tanked. That serum, that's their derivatives base exchange that was uh, a SAM coin. And uh, I said to people, hey, if you buy a little bit here, it's a lottery ticket. And uh, okay, get more people joining us here. And so, you know, with ANT, it's worth keeping an eye on because as, as long as the chart stays above its, above its uh, moving averages here, I don't know. I don't know. Um, lottery ticket. Let's keep going, though. The I want to get to the anything that's more important news and then into the charts. Spot Bitcoin ETF, why this time is different. I mean, it's important to uh, to note that. I mean, the futures ETF that they announced at the very top of the markets did not impact Bitcoin's price positively because the futures are cash settled. Spot Bitcoin ETF is where they actually have to come in and buy Bitcoin on the open markets. And, uh, and that's why it's different. So the potential spot Bitcoin ETF and its impact on the market, the impact will be significant because these big companies and institutions and funds like BlackRock, Fidelity, Valkyrie, GBTC, ARK Invest will have to buy Bitcoin on the open markets. Now, could there be over-the-counter over buying and selling? Certainly, but um, you know that's going to have to push the price is higher, more than likely. And we're going to talk about the other scenario that we have been also watching, this scenario seven ways that Bitcoin goes to 150,000. And I've been adapting this and talking about this for months now, but uh, certainly this is uh, in the cards, you guys. And, um, and this has to do with one of the major factors would be BlackRock, Fidelity, and other ETFs coming in. And if we get a perfect storm and we get all seven of these, this is the potential path to, I had it at 100K, it's now at 155K is where I have the uh, the probable landing point for the uh, for going higher. And I think possible 210K based on the Fibonacci. So we'll get back to that. And some other things. Also on the macro bull flag uh, um, measure move, which... Overlays exactly, by the way, with that 3.618 Fibonacci uh, projection, which is where took us to the last high in the markets. So if you're new to trading and uh, you think Fibonacci's and all that stuff is a bunch of mumbo jumbo, it's uh, largely self-fulfilling, but there's something to it. And that's all we need to um, to uh, keep in mind here. According to many analysts, spot Bitcoin ETF could spark a demand shock. And, um, you know, so demand shock opposite of supply shock. Other thing that's helping Bitcoin price is supply shock. The more uh, wallets are opening and less Bitcoins available. We should probably add that to the list. In fact, we will add that to the list. So let's skim through this. We've covered this a lot in the M3 Active Trader classes on Wednesdays and these classes. I know the big question is, is the spot Bitcoin ETF price priced into, to, into the charts, into the markets? I don't think so. I think partially it is. And I do think we're due for a pullback to support. But at that point, you know, then I think we push much higher and uh, to up to the 48K, 50K region. We'll talk about that here momentarily as well once we get through the news. 
And so what else here do we have? We have breaking Binance CEO. He's stepping down as the uh, Binance CEO following U.S. investigations. And that's probably so they can finger point and stay open. And uh, he's got a huge head, doesn't he? He must be an alien. Uh, no, nothing against uh, CZ here. He's done a great job. Look, think, you know, uh, on the one hand, well, let me back that up. On the one hand, here's a guy who started an exchange early on, had the foresight, built it fast, and created one of the biggest exchanges in the world. You know, I was about to say, you know, without any major uh, controversies and scandals. However, now they're talking about money laundering and other things. So maybe, and they're also talking about, was there a similar type of arm like Alameda to FTX? So, you know, I think between the lines, they these companies, they all knew they were doing it and they needed to do that to fund operations in the beginning. So the other shoe may drop here with Binance and that be, this may be the beginning of it. So I, I think it's, you know, you want to be closely monitoring this story <clears throat> because if they were to sort of somehow significantly impact Binance like an FTX implosion, that would certainly rock the markets. Uh, that would uh, be good for BlackRock, which would scoop it all up. You know, a little bit of paranoia. Let's put our tin hat on for a moment. A little bit of paranoia. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit has served me well in business over the years and in trading. And uh, and so it's a good idea to always have your emergency stop losses in place, whether you're using three commas or all tradey or you're on your active trader platform. But uh, certainly, um, I don't see that in the charts, although something like that, if it were to happen, would uh, would be a huge shock. Now, I don't think we go below. We don't think we go below the 15.5 lows. I think those are firmly in place. 30K also, I think, firmly in place. There is a 20K SC or sorry, um. Uh, I'm under the weather, you guys. <laughs> it's uh, uh, with the uh, the CME gap. Apologies. Brain's a little slow here today. And uh, so basically, um, those are all possible, but I don't think so. I don't think so. So let's see. Um, the, the news is a never-ending rabbit hole, isn't it? I'm trying to stay high level. What did the experience Ethereum whale do after the DOG, DOJ news? Did he buy or sell? And okay, and he bought uh, five million from Binance. So people are buying the dips, you guys. And uh, so, anyway, let's keep going here. Again, if you'd like to learn more about what we do, if you're watching on the uh, YouTube channel, you can go to moonstream.io for more information on uh, all of these services. This is classes specifically geared toward the news and crypto mastery indicators and how we're able to kind of tell the uh, market directions, et cetera, and using that trade checklist, which we'll come back to. So uh, let's do this. News says, Don, any questions, you guys? Where's the chat? I got the chat all the way over here. Alex says, uh, hey, Alex, there's a company that took advantage of the BTC ETF and made BTC. I heard about that, Alex. I haven't unpacked that yet. Um, let's, let's take a look at this real quick and see what this is. And I, I know you mentioned that in the M3 chat. So let's see what that's all about. Pro shares. Oh, it's on pro shares. Okay. Oh, well, I'm surprised, uh, Direxion hasn't created a institutional version of that. So it's an ETF for seeking Bitcoin returns. Well, the, wait a minute, the bit, no, the bit has been around forever. We trade, we trade the big toe and the BT in the, uh, vertical returns class. So that might, that must not be it. Is that what you're referring to, Alex? Because that's uh, that's been around. Spot Bitcoin ETF approval scene, driving money managers to crypto. Yeah, and so okay. So, yeah, Ark Invest ignores SEC advice, refiles. There's Spot Bitcoin ETF, and uh, let's see. SEC leak reveals sudden a trillion Bitcoin ETF update. Uh, we're going down the rabbit hole, you guys. I don't want to go into the news anymore. We're already uh, 40 minutes in class, so. Uh, all right, you got a link for me. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Let's take a look at this. Uh, and it's not opening for me easily here. Let's take let's do it this way. We'll do it the hard way. Copy paste. Bitcoin ETF token. And okay, yeah, I did hear about this. Um, this seems like kind of a betting on sports team, like mm, gambling almost. The only token rewarding holders, maybe, maybe not, but uh, on big as Bitcoin ETFs are approved. Okay, well. Uh, I'll keep I'll I'll research that a bit. I don't want to get into it right now, Alex. Uh, let's uh, let's get into the charts here um, at a high level here. Let's see what the 
the DY. My charts got buggered here a bit. What happened? How am I on the four hour with this thing? The are. Huh. Okay. That's DYDX. Let me get out of there here and uh dydx i do want to look at here's we'll look at our market movers i wanted to look at sort of the overall market solana you know, pulling back as we said it would in this upward trending channel let's look at uh all three of these here we'll look at bitcoin bitcoin has come up above Thirty-six thousand. As I've been saying for a long time, once it broke and held above 32k quick rise up i do think we're heading higher but in terms of the uh the near term Where's that other chart here? Well, here's uh, that pop, that macro bull flag, by the way, that, would, that the measured move from this could take us up to that 210K range. Again, that's the Fibonacci projection from the market cycle high to the low. So that's what we're watching for. And I, I in my other class, we talk about why we think that'll happen before the halving versus after. So TLDRs, hold on to your hats, guys. If we start breaking higher quickly, I think this can push up um, fairly quick and uh, it won't be dragged out to 2025 potentially so look at the bull market support band uh so the pullback i think we come back here to around what is this how did i get on there singularity doubt i want to get to bitcoin here so pull back to that 32k level i think is probable and then look for our signals so our signals are overbought right now we don't have a bearish eri in bitcoin but we do have this getting overbought on the tsi uh, on the uh, weekly time frame. So ideally, what we'd want to see is, is, is a multi-week pullback here to around 32K and then bounce. If we come to 30K, that's an even bigger buying opportunity, not financial advice, but uh, here's that CME gap at around 20K I was referencing. So on this uh, longer time frame, would like to see another cycle, another bullish ERI, TSI signal and bell, because those are our uh, those are our best indicators for the longer term to uh, to go higher. And so that's kind of what I'm waiting for. We pushed up here from that level. I, it's it's time for a pullback. We're in this upward trending channel. So with this question mark. So that's kind of what I'm expecting here, you guys. So and again, the 48K, 50K is that golden pocket we've been watching and talking about on the next bounce. So <clears throat> let's see. Let's clean up some charts here. That's kind of a similar look and why don't we do this let's just make a clean chart of all this and uh because there's a lot going on here if there's anything you guys wanted me to look at we can certainly do that all right so with this list uh, this list here i'm going to uh, make a copy and uh november 2023 all right <clears throat> so here we have Move drawings. Let's start over, you guys. There we go. Nice clean chart, Bitcoin. All right. What I want to do is, um, what do you guys see? I'm going to come up here into our my templates, and uh, we'll just add our indicators one at a time. So again, see, so yeah, we have some new eyes on this here today. In terms of our indicators, uh, these are available at CryptoMastery.org. The early reversal indicator as uh, one of our this is an accidental indicator that's been amazing for us i'm just going to do a little review on this we were about to kind of get rid of this older oscillator and then we started noticing a pattern where there was a high correlation uh, of these uh signals down here we've put on as arrows and so there's a little bit of noise in the middle parts of this but when we go to a weekly chart it was uh, it's been excellent in catching these tops and bottoms we call the bottom by to the day into the week back in july of 2021 the market cycle high here in november where we were telling people to get out also these little swings the high here the high here the low here earlier this year and the macro low on a monthly basis uh this uh ERI is only triggered four times, by the way. So in 2012, 2015, 2019, and here in 2023. So these work in all time frames, just these two alone. And the reason that I wanted to revisit that is because of that trend, uh, the trading success checklist. So the ERI here is the ERI showing a green up arrow, and that would be your first check mark. So if you get two or three or more of these, then it's a buy in my book. Is the TSI green and above the 20 line? So let me jump over to show you that. And um, 
<clears throat> excuse me so let's turn on the uh, tsi here so we've got t uh, it's gonna be trend strength indicator and sorry guys a little different uh format here today this one and so when these align, I'll turn this ERI off. So basically, TSI, ERI, TSI is our, our two signals. When these combine, very high probability that it continues on, on the bullish and bearish side. So here, that market cycle top went red. We went from green to red down here. Okay, that was a great sell signal. Similarly, when, so this here did not get back above the 20 line. So this was not a buy signal, but this one was. So green arrow here, cross over here, and then it went back to red and then back to red. So you can see it, these uh, these are great for catching these short-term market swings. And then one of the, the third signal we layer in is our signal line. So we add that to the chart. Down below, when this goes red as well, from green to red rather, that's another buy signal. So when we start to see these, we layer into them and adding these check marks. And so right now at this point, this trade has a score of three out of 19. Now we're revising this a bit. We've got some other indicators where you can add in things to the score. So it really gives more confidence in layering in and adding to the trend uh, and the trade. So here, does the trend indicator have a green midline? Let's take a look at the trend indicator. And that would be the fourth indicator in this uh, suite, which I'll jump over to in a minute. And uh, it is called the trend indicator there. So when these start aligning, you guys, it's like 95% chance and follow through on these. And so we are having some good signals here on the longer term trend indicator. So the way to use this is when you see a key, that's a signal there may be a trend forming. The bell is the buy signal. And the nuance we've layered in recently is as long as the slope here is around 45 degrees, that, uh, that's follow through. So we're on a weekly time frame, bullish on the weekly, but I do think on the short term, we get a little bit of a pullback on the daily. But uh, so the ERI, TSI, Signal and Bell, we're working on combining those into a super indicator all in one. But uh, in terms of the here, cryptomastery.org. You can learn more about these. These are a secret weapon where you can uh, sign up for a month free. You got, by the way, right now, you guys, if you aren't already using these, these are the best indicators I've used in 25 years of trading, bar none. And uh, we're showing you in this class how to use them. Here's that simplified version of the ERI and TSI. When those two things align, it's like taking candy from a baby almost uh, on these weekly charts. And, uh, and also the dailies, but we really like it on the swings, the, mark, the macro market inflections on the weekly, monthly timeframes, and then layering in things like the average true range. And also you can read other feedback from traders that are using these and you can just click on here. You can find out how to get a free month on those crypto mastery indicators. Trust me, guys, these, uh, these are excellent and you can do monthly, but if you want to get the free month, just go in here and sign up for that. Uh, and uh, so that's the point of this class. If you guys have any questions on the indicators, though, that's what we're here for and uh, to go through these. So but those are the basic ones on the shorter time frame. We have a couple others that we use. I don't know if I want to get into you looking at the vol index here today. Uh, we could. But uh, let's just see. So this is a chart of Bitcoin. A lot of sell pressure up in this upper range. The vol index is this lower indicator here that also can be very helpful in determining the uh, the signals. So when it gets overbought up here and comes down out of the green range, sell signal, and when it's coming out of the bottom range, oversold from red to black, that's a buy signal. So right in here is September 15th, uh, sorry, October 15th, we would have had another buy signal. And if we close that, it coincided with these other buy signals. And there's a lot to look at here, you guys, but uh, right in here. So if we zoom out on the four hour, one hour time frames, excellent uh, conf confirming indicator right down in here. So the vol index caught this little low and uh, pushed that higher. And so uh, that's another good tool you guys can use. So anyway, um, let's do this. Let's look at some market movers here, see what's happening and um, we've got a couple here, Moon River. I, the barometer here is it's at least 50 million. 
and uh, volume generally. So, I mean, that barely makes it. We can look at mover. Let me skim down the list. A lot of these I don't see. The markets are really slow today. So anything that is moving is likely a pump and dump. Uh, and by the way, if you didn't see that, uh, there's a Black Friday 70% off sale on TradingView. If you haven't already taken advantage of that, it's a good time to add to your, your uh, subscription length. Okay, so uh, Moon River here, I'm not uh, terribly familiar with it. If we go back to a five-day just to reduce some noise, nice looking chart here. It's dipping above the long downward trending channel. If we did something like this. So that's that's a pattern I've been we've been doing very well with in the last few weeks, kind of breaking above that. Uh, however, on the it's a bit overbought on the uh, TSI, the trend strength indicator. Let's see where I'll put on. I like to have uh, two indicators, an exponential moving average. Uh, let's see, since I already have. OK, well, what's cool about TradingView is you can come in here and add your templates to charts that don't have it. So here's my 2023 four horsemen as i call them the four horsemen is the eri tsi signal and bell so that would be that trend indicator and that's our mantra to look for long signals so certainly back here on bitcoin there's the eri the tsi the signal and the bell so that was an excellent buy signal right there and uh went up um how far did we go up there you guys it's about uh 40 percent move right so we're still riding up when i say we have bitcoin um on this uh, 21 day ema where um, we were looking at Moon River, though. So let's take a look at that. And that is not the right one. Okay, let's see. So it's on KuCoin. Anytime you see something moving on KuCoin, you want to be a little suspect uh, because of the margin trading that they have there. So nice little pump, though. Got some a buy block here. This is our ERI Pro, which we haven't released fully yet. But uh, if you are a member of Crypto Mastery, You'll be notified uh, first on that. And uh, so a nice looking candle. I don't know. I would keep Moon River on the radar. I don't know what it is, but that's a nice looking chart. I love these crossovers of the 21 and 50 day EMAs right there. Always a good sign, especially on the weekly chart. So keep an eye out on uh, Moon River. I'd say, you know, this is how we found ATOR before it went up 100% plus. And uh, again, so that weekly EMA is rolling over. Weekly early reversal indicator. Looking good. The TSI 2. You know, so that chart looks pretty good. I don't know what Moon River does. Not a recommendation to buy or sell. But let's just see. Moon token price. And are you guys familiar with Moon? I'm not uh, as familiar with it. So we'll go over to... Been using CoinGecko more than, than Coin Market Cap lately, and um, let's see about. Except I don't know where all the buttons are. Learns <laughs> uh, Coin Market Cap. I have at least know where everything is. Decline today. Moons. Where can you find? All right, let's not do that right now. Coin Market Cap. It's got a nice button that says About, so we know what they do. Cryptocurrency designed to power the Mooncoin platform. Prediction system allows holders of Mooncoin to win free tokens simply by playing. So it's kind of like, a, I don't know, I don't want to say pyramid scheme, but sort of like a gaming type of platform. And um, okay, I don't know. I, I For me, that's not, I might play it short term uh, based on the chart, but otherwise not, uh, not really my... Uh, cup of tea there especially since it's on kucoin and you get those margin pumps and uh and dumps often so that that's moon river let's see what else is moving if you guys want to see any that are moving we're coming up on the hour let's see ks says the uh so let's take a look at near we can do that haven't looked at near in a while that's a great uh project usually and what is going on here n-e-r n-e-a-r where can we trade in here anymore? You can, if you're US based, MEXC still allows no KYC for the time being. Binance is a no. Uh, KuCoin, I guess we'll use that for the chart. And um, if you guys uh, know of any places to get near on the US, let me know. But again, here's that nice chart. The reason it's a great time to be getting into the markets is all these positions are significantly de risked because they've come down so far. And a lot of them are breaking out of these downward trending channels. So I would have liked to have seen more of a, a base here 
and a horizontal base instead of a lower low. So that's a little suspect, although these wedges do tend to break toward the upside. And again, you have that crossover of the 21 and 50 day EMAs right down in here. So what is the weekly telling us? Hitting 50 week EMA resistance. And then uh, on our indicators, I'm always going to the ERA, ERI first, getting a bearish ERI on the daily. And But we had a nice bullish ERI on that weekly. So honestly, you want to be watching those weekly charts for the best opportunities because they tend to have the longer follow through. And that's a TLDR from this class is when we originally developed these indicators, we were mostly trading them on a daily time frame, but there was a lot of whipsaws. And uh, the developer, our partner, Joe, who's a quant engineer and a 25-year trader and programmer, said, we want to watch the weeklies on these. And certainly, um, those have been very good. So when we get the early reversal, bullish green arrow, and the TSI going green, sorry, red to green and above the 20 line on the weekly time frame, generally, we have those multi-week follow-throughs, as we saw here and here. So those are the things we look for. And I share a lot more of those in our M3 Active Trader class, which is tomorrow, Wednesdays. And you can learn more about that at the moonstream.io page. But uh, here we're here to mostly talk about the indicators and the news. So here we see this uh, kind of hitting resistance on the um, this 50-week EMA with near. So I wouldn't be buying here. I like to buy these bottoms, these arrows down below. So uh, I would uh, keep an eye out for that. Also, the radar indicator, which is also our proprietary indicator. When they're all the same color, excellent uh, sign for going in that direction when it's mixed like a christmas tree it's here nor there this is the daily weekly monthly and the three month or the quarterly and they can be mixed uh, if they're mixed what i see here is near is up for the day down for the week and bearish for the week but up for the month so typically if they're all red time to get out if it's all green it's another signal to get in if it's mixed it's time to sort of stay out and watch and see what happens now on the uh, weekly time frame also though is the ATR is starting to go bullish. So this is another overlay, the average true range. So it's uh, you can catch these swings. I do like it when they align. It's just right now we're hitting resistance on that 50-day EMA. So what can we do? Set alerts just above that so we know when <clears throat> it's going higher. And those are good signs, signals of strength that that's a good time to get in. And actually, that's a bit high. I want to put it right above this little resistance zone around 2.9 or sorry, 2.40. Okay. So we'll keep an eye on that near is worth keeping an eye on. And I'm going to add it to our watch list right there uh, with that alert. So uh, let's see a couple comments near to quite a hike since the last ERA print on October 19th. Exactly. And I'm looking at it on the weekly basis. So are you looking at it on the daily? Sounds like October, uh well let's see october 19th i'm seeing the last eri is october 21st but you know it's a few days ks so but on your point it has gone up you know as of today about 98 percent exactly there's 100 percent on those and notice how the eri also sorry the atr all these acronyms you guys i'm sorry but eri is early reversal indicator tsi is trend strength indicator and then the ATR is average true range. And uh, the others that uh, we don't have acronyms on those four yet. No, I don't plan to. But uh, this was a great signal. Had you been watching near on these daily time frames, the ERI. So we, if we were on our checklist, the ERI check went same day. I uh, went to the TSI above 20 right there. So check. And when I say check, I'm doing this. So we have the. ERI up, yes, and uh, TSI above 20, yes. Signal line turned from red to green. And it did almost on the same day as well. And then I don't have what happened to the trend indicator. It seems to have disappeared, so we can add that back on. Okay, and that's here. So on that same day, the day after, the reason these indicators are great is because they can add two positions. So essentially the same, uh, the next day we got the bell. The bell was a buy signal. So and this is a great example of that trend indicator. So you buy at the key, sorry, you watch for a trend reversal at the key, you buy at the bell 
and sell it the bag of money here. Okay, so we have key and then bell, and then uh, did another cycle key and a bell, key and a bell. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, that is how we use those indicators. That's a great example. And uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Near got hammered when Terra Luna went down, and during the bear market, they recently announced partnership with Polygon. Okay, yeah, I did hear about that. And KS okay, saying near is overbought now. I would agree with that. We have a bearish ERI now, so this would be a good profit-taking zone. And also, what else do we watch? We watch the upper Bollinger Band with the three standard deviations and look at there, it nailed it once again. So if you're not using a three standard deviation Bollinger Band, you're missing out. When it breaks above that upper three Bollinger Band, invariably pulls back. So we saw that yesterday. We get the bearish ERI today. And it's a beautiful example of how these indicators uh, work for us. And starting to see this turn down. So it's likely near continues to pull back in, but we knew early because hence the name, the early reversal indicator uh, is showing. Uh, near also broke that $2 range first time in seven months. Yeah, those round numbers tend to uh, re uh, retrace from those, don't they? So, all right, anything else you guys want to look at? Uh, ERI print. Well, you know, on a three-day chart, KS, I don't use... Those, if you start messing around with too many time frames, you can you can find conflicting signals. I like a day, uh, daily, and a weekly, and a monthly on these. Uh, but you can use that for whatever you like. And of course, these signals do work on all uh, all the uh, currencies and whatever you have on TradingView, futures, stocks, etc. Instruments is the word I was looking for. And uh, okay, so you're playing with. Um, Dirk's uh, method from the Crypto Summit. Okay, uh, that's good to know, KS. And um, uh, okay, let's talk about that in, in tomorrow's M3 class, KS. So hopefully you can join for that. And those of you that don't know what that means, the M3 crypto class is tomorrow. These are paid classes. We go much deeper into the markets, looking at uh, macro things in the DXY, monthly charts, weekly charts, and go a little deeper into the TA and those price projections. I'll also be unpacking this chart here, which is the seven steps to 155K Bitcoin and higher. And uh, we were also talking about adding an eighth step, which was, you know, instead of supply shock, but the demand shock. And um, I think that's fair. That's sort of a, a result, though, of some of these other items. Corporate accumulation, microstrategy, big companies buying more, country accumulation, and the post having there'll be less miners selling because there'll be less to mine. So do we want to add in an eighth one for, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but... Um, the demand shock, well, here's the thing. I think we can because the demand shock is also coming from more and more Bitcoin going off of exchanges into cold storage. So, so potential demand shock. Okay. And less supply. Okay. Trying to get it all on one line there. And, uh, okay, we did it. So that's cool. So we'll talk about that more tomorrow. And, uh, and so of course you can follow this along on trading view. I have a, uh, I had originally posted this November 8th earlier this month, um, and have posted different versions of it, uh, prior. So we're watching this to see if we don't get this parabolic move higher, like we did back in the, uh, going into the 2020 to one. 2021 bull run. I think I'm getting COVID, you guys. My brain is turning to mush, uh, but I am here for you. Uh, so, and if you want more information about so the M3 classes, just go here. We have live daily chat and a signal group. Do a Wednesday class like this one, a little longer, a little more in depth, and access to the indicators is included. So you can learn more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. And of course, includes these classes as well. And you can read about other people's comments about those classes. That's our kind of highest level training for active traders. And uh, we dabble more in short-term trading, active trading, and uh, quite a bit uh, in there. So um, let's see, anything else, you guys? All right, uh, Dave, thanks for joining. And uh, please join us next week, every Tuesday at noon for more of this. We'll unpack the news, look at some charts. I think, you know, I'll stick around a little bit more and let's take a look at if there's anything moving. I'm going to jump over to our crypto mastery list. And uh, let's see, what is MOVR? So we have, well, that's Moon River. We already talked about that. I'm sorry. Um, 
strange symbol. Uh, let's see. So as far as what we've looked at in the last few weeks, most of the markets are down. And we turn off this uh, ATR. But look at this on Stratus, you guys. The radar is all green, however. Hmm. That's when you want to pay attention, though, and start looking for other signals crossing. So uh, I don't see anything else confirming. We're green on the ATR. But what I'd want to know here is, and I'll turn off the Bollinger Band, is I want to set an alert for when this thing starts breaking up into new highs. And it doesn't look like that's price discovery zone, but still up here around $1.20 would be breaking above a local area high. And um, that's that's you know usually a sign of strength. We've got all green on the radar. radar. That's why I set that uh, alert. All right, uh, struggling here a bit to get through this. Oh, uh, uh, see, uh, let's see, injunctive. So many things pulling back. I have been saying expect a pullback here, which would be likely and healthy for the markets. So we're seeing a bit of that. XRP strangely is is really weakening, even though it won its case. So I guess that was more of a sell the news type of event. You know, so you may want to look for what I'd be looking for here is a new bullish ERI and TSI if you like XRP, and just wait for those. Uh, let the cake bake. Let these patterns come to you. Filecoin getting a bit of a sell off here. Had a big run. Uh, these are, you know, it's not the end of the day yet, but uh, certainly uh, feels the markets are a bit weak here today. Uh, probably the Binance news. Because the Binance, if they're having these other coins considered securities, you know, that's going to uh, put pressure on a lot of these other ones as well. But um, I wouldn't worry about it. These are buy the dip opportunities. And, um, you know, because worst case scenario, they'll go out, go offshore. Uh, I don't know. We'll keep an eye on this, though. Filecoin still a good project, one of our top picks. And see what else do we have quick swap xlm stellar lumens so um you know it is this is not a good looking chart on xlm lumens so it's a bit concerning some of these are weakening so much but you want to be watching the ones that are still trending higher and like immutable x gaming is going to be huge these are just some of the ones we've watched in recent weeks and so it's uh yeah, I think this is mostly the Binance news. We want to see how the market digests this through the week. It is a holiday week too, so volumes are going to be lower. You can't really trust these moves on lower volume days. So I think, you know, we need to wait for this to kind of settle out and see what happens. Ethereum holding strong though. Uh, look at this. We have a bullish ERI on the daily. And um, okay, so here's, here's some positive sort of news to watch. It's too early to tell, but the, so the supply drops to five-year lows. So here we have an a, a example of um, a demand, kind of a demand shock. Uh, supply down lower, any catalyst for more demand for Ethereum could push this higher pretty quick. And uh, I like the fact that it broke above this 2000 level, came back and retested. We, we like to see pullbacks, to the 21 day EMAs, and then, then they break higher. So um, we have an ERI. I would say that a, a buy signal for me on Ethereum is when this TSI goes green on a closing daily basis and uh, starts to head higher. And then I would add to that with a signal line going green. And I would add to it if we get another trend line or trend indicator, a new key and bell on Ethereum. I'm a big Ethereum bull. And so I think um, I like this pattern with from that 21 day EMA and that ERI. And uh, from that checklist, you know, these are all uh, check uh, items you can add to it. So if we have a trend indicator showing a bell, we don't yet. Uh, we don't have that yet, but uh, bullish engulfing candle. Mm, no, we do not. Candle body at support, though. It is on Ethereum. It's uh, at 21 day support. So that's a check. And is it above the 21 and 50 EMA? It is. So that's another check mark. Okay, still it's in bullish territory. Is price above a rising support trend line? And let's see, it is, you know, so I want to be, don't we want to be too generous with this, but it is at a rising support trend line. Okay. So, you know, these are improving the chances on this going higher is price breaking, <laughs> breaking, breaking above trend line resistance. Uh, it's not, but it will be soon. And so we'll hold that, but Ethereum's got a good score here is the volatility, volatility index above the 20 level. 
Uh, I've got a wicked cold, you guys. I can barely speak. Um, and is the rocket. The rocket is one of our formations that we've decided, uh, we've discovered rather. And um, you can see an example of two of them here. And uh, we'll talk about those more in our M3 class tomorrow. There's not a rocket currently on Ethereum. Uh, and some more advanced signals. So uh, look for a new version of this with clearer uh, images, but um, kind of a cool a reference guide for when to get into trades uh, using these indicators. And you can get that free at uh, the moonstream.io site. But uh, Ethereum not looking too bad, you guys. So I think it's holding well here. I'd like to see Bitcoin you know, on a weekly time frame come back a bit, maybe come back to 34K, 32K, and, uh, and then find the strength to push higher. Uh, let's see, DYDX we talked about. Uh, isn't that funny? The uh, These squiggly lines here I drew a couple of weeks ago that it would push higher, come back and retest, which it is. And this little zone of opportunity here, again, with DYDX, this is a derivatives-based exchange, uh, DEX, a derivatives-based DEX that has a cool platform. And I think this is the future of trading. They're doing a, a $20 million airdrop here soon. So you might want to get on that, the version four, if you are outside the US and see if you can get some of that. And um, I like this. So once it breaks above this level, though, uh, it's uh, it's it's... It's been a while since it's been above above that, so it should go much higher. And I keep an eye on that. So I'll send an alert here on DYDX once it gets back up and then give myself a little note here saying bye, question mark. All right, you guys. Well, I think uh, that's all we have time for here today. A lot of things are down. This is this Binance news just dragging things down across the board and uh, more FUD. Uh, we'll see what happens. The bull market should carry everything higher. And this thing will uh, will sort out eventually. I don't know. Uh, Gensler, I don't think it's here for that much longer. And all it would take is a more forward-looking SEC chair to kind of say, hey, look, uh, we're going to allow these things. But we don't know. We have to keep that in mind and do look for strength when other things are down. I'm surprised to see this Moon River up. But again, it's on uh, these other exchanges like KuCoin and Crypto.com where they have, they have margin um, but, you know, I like the fact that TSI is green and the ERI is green. So if Moon River can close above current levels and not sell off, then I think it looks pretty strong for potential short-term swing tra trade, but uh, not financial advice. All right. Uh, one last bit of news here. Potentially more sovereign demand. Argentina just gained a pro Bitcoin president. All right. Good news. Thanks for sharing that, KS. You know, Um so Argentina is stepping in line behind El Salvador and potentially others. Citizens already participate because Argentinian fiat got wrecked by decades of hyperinflationary fiscal policy. Uh, Michael Saylor, by the way, also encouraging Turkey to do the same. So, you know, we could see these third world countries. I'm not saying Turkey's third world, but I guess it's pretty close. Anyway, um, the ones that have devalued their fiat so much that Bitcoin may be their only saving grace to uh, get out of that. But anyway, you guys, thanks for being here. Uh, please join us um, for tomorrow's M3 Active Trader class. If you're not yet a member of Active Trader, just go over to moonstream.io slash M3. It's an excellent class and uh, we are poised for some excellent trades. We do give trade recommendations there and you can learn more about our other courses at moonstream.io. All right, please like the video if you liked it, and uh, we'll be back here. Hopefully you like the new format here, be on screen, and uh, we'll be back to see you guys next Tuesday. All right, take care, everyone.